Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Friday. I hope that you have had the most amazing week. We all know the week is long. We know the week is tiring. We know how much stress you've been under, but you have made it to Friday. Now, we know we don't live for Fridays, but we can't not not rejoice over a Friday because Fridays are days when we know we've done what we needed to do. If this is the first time that you're tuning into Conversations with Toy, thank you for listening. I am Toy, the podcaster, but I'm also a blogger as well as a content creator here in the Philadelphia area. I am a content creator that talks about lifestyle um, topics as well as mental health and wellness. I hope that while you're here, that something that you listen to will be uplifting will help you in some way, maybe make you laugh, make you think, or even give you that release so that you can cry. And if there's ever, at any given time, any time that I need to use trigger warning, I will do so because I honestly believe that we should have that moment to prepare ourselves or decide when something we no longer want to listen to or be a part of. So welcome, welcome, welcome. On this podcast, again, I'm going to talk about social media things that are happening in these internet streets, but I'm also going to talk about self-care, mental health and wellness, and sometimes we may mention the words therapy and things that, because again, my goal is to encourage you to seek whatever help that you need. This week, I do want to cover a multitude of topics this week. One of the things that I definitely want to talk about is Keith Lee. Now, if you do not follow me on TikTok, we're not going to just throw a little shameless plug. Follow me on TikTok at TikTok at Toy Time Blog. But let me tell you, Keith Lee has single-handedly been shaking up the restaurant industry. And although this situation that I'm going to talk about happened in Atlanta, let's be clear. This could have happened anywhere. And Philadelphia, if my fellow fellow Philadelphians, are you listening? Are you a restaurant owner? Are you thinking about becoming a restaurant owner? This is why you got to pay attention. I dislike it when people say that customer service doesn't matter or influencers don't matter because we just learned two lessons this week. They absolutely matter. Um, How you treat your customers, the best of them, the worst of them, the big ones or the small they matter. And when you don't, it could very well come be a issue for you later down the road. So Keith Lee is an amazing food reviewer. Absolutely amazing food reviewer. He is super generous, but what he likes to do is kind of go under the under, you know, undercover sort of in a way. And when he's not doing that, He just wants to pay for his own food. He's not, he doesn't want anything for free. He doesn't want any energy. He just wants to get in, get out and taste the food, give it a review. A lot of times he's been going to some of the smaller restaurants that people don't know about. And that's really been helpful because a lot of people don't lack good food. They just don't have good marketing. And so he's just been out here blessing the people by going to their restaurants, reviewing it. And the second that he says, this is the go, this is good. People go and they flock to these restaurants. So it's a great thing. Now, the issue is he's been going to on, he's been on a little bit of Atlanta tour. So Atlanta has been shaking in their boots over Keith Lee because Keith Lee has been making sure he hits these streets to talk about the fact that some of these restaurants in Atlanta are just plain ridiculous. So the restaurant that he went to is called The Real Milk and Honey. It is in Atlanta. He went there. He tried to get some DoorDash food. They didn't have it. Um, They claimed that they closed at uh, a certain time, but when he went to try to get it, he couldn't get it. So he went there to get the food, sent his family in to get it. They were just like, nah, we can't do that. So then, you know, he goes and all of a sudden Christmas miracles. It was just a mess. It was just, it was a shamble of a mess. 
Nonetheless, since then, there has been these reports of either the owner, a manager, somebody closely associated with this restaurant has been saying things like, how dare you listen to an autistic man tell you what you can and cannot eat? Why? Who is Keith Lee? He is nobody. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how big an influencer or a social media person or anybody, to be honest with you, is if any reason they go and give a bad review, you need to treat all bad reviews as ways of improvement. Right here in the Philadelphia um, city, there was a person that came to me. She's one of my friends. She's also a fellow foodie. We had went to an event and we went to a restaurant here in the Philadelphia area. And when I say they were absolutely amazing, she was with me when we went to this restaurant, okay? She goes back to that same restaurant and the service is absolutely horrific. Do you understand me? So when she asked me my opinion, I said, post it. She had recorded, cause you know, this is the recording age. She had recorded the uh, foolishness that had gone down. And I said to her, post it. Now, will this affect people that I know? Yeah, it's not my job to make you do your job. But yes, everybody is one post away from having your situation be turned around. And did she go to the manager to try to fix it? Yes. Did the manager fix it? Absolutely not. So I am of the of the premise that I'll give you the opportunity to fix it. What I don't like, and this happens here in Philadelphia, and I'm gonna step on some toes today, but I'm all right, okay? I am okay, but I'm here to step on the toes. Here in Philadelphia, we have these wonderful PRs. Some of them are the most amazing people I work with, right? And they want you, when a situation happens, to come to them so that you don't post it. Like if something's not good, something's not right, they want you to go behind the scenes and have conversations with the PR. I will always give common courtesy to the PRs that I work with. However, if the situation doesn't get remedied, I am not inclined to protect your client because that's not my job. I get it. You're trying to save space. You don't want an issue to happen, but this is the thing. I know for a full fledged fact that there have been people who have come on my page, saw that I was at a restaurant or a hairdresser or a nail salon or wherever I may have been. And they have gone there off the strength that I said, oh, this is a good place to try. You should eat this and that. Here's your recommendations. Try this cocktail, do this and do that. Right. Just off of me. And I ain't even no big time. I'm no Keith Lee. And when they got there, they discovered that it was a hot mess. They did not treat anybody with any type of decency and respect and quite as is kept there is a very much racism here in philadelphia as well so the same ones that will skin and grin at me at these same events they may not necessarily do it to me directly because they know that i have good relationships and close relationship with the prs but they have done it to people who look just like me and when i get news of it i have talked to the pr about it ain't nothing happened though <laughs> let's keep it 100 nothing absolutely happened and so going forward, I wouldn't even go back to that restaurant, but per adventure, somebody else did like my good friend did and asked me what she should do. I say, post it, post it. I believe in giving everybody chances to do something better. I believe that everybody, whether you work in the restaurant industry or not, you have, you are entitled to be human and have bad days and have mo bad moments. However, in the industry where you are garnered by one, people spending their dollar in there, two, by people wanting to come into your uh, establishment, you've got to try to make things right. This particular restaurant did not, still has not, and whatever comes about that, comes about it. Um, again, I get that PRs want to protect their client, but protecting their client doesn't necessarily mean that you're protecting the person that went and spent their dollars, right? For me personally, I go to a lot of media events and I will also try to double back and go back to those same restaurants, especially if the food was good, because I want to make sure that I patron. And I also tip I tip very well because I know the behind scenes that happen with the restaurant industry. But if Keith Lee were to come to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, would he get the same treatment? 
I believe that there would be some restaurants here in the Philadelphia area that would not pass that test. And I said that on TikTok and I am not taking it down, redoing it. You know, let's talk about, there's nothing to talk about. I know for a full fledged fact that if a Keith Lee came into the Philadelphia area, that there would be some restaurants that would not be able to pass the test of customer service. They would not be able to uh, pass the test of being good to people and doing what's right. They would not pass the test of making decent food because sometimes the food ain't all that great. Okay. And this is why when I go to events, I only highlight the things that I feel were good. I'm not highlighting everything if I don't believe that the things that I had was good. Sorry, not going to do it. What's interesting is instead of worrying about whether or not a Keith Lee would ever come to the Philadelphia area, why don't we do what's right by all customers? Why are we not treating all customers the same? You can have the most bomb, bomb ass food. But you have to have good customer service. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Before I became a blogger, before I became a content creator, before I became any of those things, I was the one that would review the hell out of a company. That is any restaurant, retail, hair, nail, anything. I always reviewed. Every time I stepped into an establishment, I reviewed. And I never sat up there and said, oh, you know, I got to wait and talk to the PR. Because 90% of us, quiet as it's kept, don't even know who the PRs of these restaurants are. I had the unique privilege of knowing a lot of them because I work with them. But again, I will give common courtesy to you about once. There's one place, it was actually in Jersey, I won't go back because the racism was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. And anytime I'm in out with my kids and I was actually with my kids, and this is how you know that establishment is, is, is off. First of all, I was with my kids. If a child, if a child being in your presence can't stop you from acting off and ugly, saying rude things or having me ready to knock when, when you buck, you are off and I will never, never visit that establishment. Never will, never will. I haven't been back, won't go back, won't support it, won't post it, won't nothing. Cause it's just, it is what it is. Did I talk to the PR? Yep. Did the PR do anything? Nope. Because what was that PR supposed to do? Give me the PR answer? You know, well, they must, no, 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 no. See, I know when I'm in and and I'm around foolishness. I know when I'm around bad customer service. I know when I'm around it because again, I'm around it all the time. I'm around customer service areas and things where people could either make or break. So I am very sure, very clear that we have to do a better job. And by we, I mean, y'all who are restaurant owners, y'all gonna have to step it up. Yes, y'all were hit hard when the pandemic, just like every other industry, And honestly, some of them are still uh, railing from that. Some people have not recovered from it. And my heart goes out to them because they believe in their businesses and they wanted to see their businesses thrive and grow. But Keith Lee is just one drop in a bucket of a thousand Keith Lees. We're all Keith Lees. Every last one of us are Keith Lees. And one thing I've learned this week, you have to be aware. And I didn't learn it this week. It just became apparent more and more this week is that people are going to record sound bites video they're going to do all the things this is a phone generation they will film first before they call 911 what makes you think that you would be beyond being having this situation happen that's happening in Atlanta right then the old lady gang which is another restaurant in Philadelphia we're back to Keith Lee they did the same thing dropped the ball Uh, I can't understand for the life of me. He practically gave everybody the blueprint. All you have to do is watch a few of Keith Lee's videos, get his sense of style, know how he's going to do this and be prepared. When he made the church announcement and said he was going to Atlanta for food and he was going to be reviewing, why didn't everybody get on it, get on one accord, one band, one sound? Why didn't everybody do what they needed to do? Why in the world would you allow this to have happened? You should have been on your P's, your Q's, your R's and all the things to be prepared, ready to go. Because again, why would you have been off on anything? Why would you have done it? (sighs) Poor Atlanta. I actually don't feel sad, sad for Atlanta. I don't feel sorry for not one restaurant owner in Atlanta. And let me tell you why. The reason why is because 
the way Atlanta moves, Atlanta moves differently than most uh, places. They just do. They have a thousand and one rules for some of times mediocre food. Sometimes that stuff is just the Instagram stuff where you get cute photos, cute pictures and cute videos and you go about your way. All that food ain't always good. And number two, you have rules that just don't make sense. Telling somebody you have to have a shirt and shoes for service, that makes sense. We've been seeing them signs since I was a baby, right? Right. But telling somebody that, well, you know, we can guarantee good food, but we can't guarantee nothing else. I'm not even stepping my baby toe in your restaurant because what you're basically telling me is, well, the food is good, but whatever you get as far as service or quality or anything else, we can't guarantee. That's crazy to me. And if you want to stay in business, why would you put a sign on the door that says that? Why would that be your actual rules? I'm not, I'm not getting it. But Keith Lee has been making his stir. Keith Lee has been on the rise. I love everything about what he does. And he gives back. He helps small business owners to make sure that they can thrive. It's I call it the Keith Lee effect. A lot of people have been calling it the Keith Lee effect because when he comes through, he blesses. He blesses. And just with his presence and the fact that he wants to do right, do good. And he's not letting this get to his head like he's been remaining calm and and and, and just doing the same things he did when he first came out. I'm here for it. I hope that he never changes. Now, here in Philadelphia, it is cold. It's cold to me. I know some people who love the cold. God bless you and your bones because the way I'm set up, it is extremely cold. And we literally went from having Halloween candy and turn up and eat all the chocolate, grab all the candy, and now we out here for literally in, we're just freezing. And now they done thawed out Mariah, and now it's time to get ready for Christmas. I want to talk about something serious. I know we talked about the Keith Lee situation and getting it together. And listen, I meant every word. I'm not taking it back. I'm not editing. I'm not going to come back and make it right. I'm not coming back to make a statement. I'm not going to circle back around the block. But I want, I do want to talk about something serious. Again, as always, we're talking about mental health. We talk about wellness. We talk about these things that matter and these things that affect our every single day because Keith Lee's situation is going to come and go. But the way your mindset is set right now is absolutely imperative that we talk. Now that we are getting colder, and again, I say colder because I live in Philadelphia where it is cold to me. So that's why I am saying that. Um, now that we're in these colder months, let's be honest. I was driving my car the other day and I was just watching like on the highway. It's really anywhere, but just on the highway, how the beautiful leaves and the oranges and the reds, it's a beautiful, it was just beautiful drives, just beautiful drives, even in the rain. And I was thinking to myself about how in a few months, not even months, let's just say a month or so, this weather is going to change yet again. And in the midst of it changing, you don't get to see the beautiful reds and the beautiful oranges because we go from one season to another. And I know I talked about seasonal depression. I've talked about this many times, and that's not the only form of depression. So before y'all start saying you only talk about this, nope, I talk about depressions of all kinds because there are variations of it. But I do want to send some encouragement to people because now that we're having colder weather, we're going to be dealing with um, the daylight savings this weekend. You have just a... a change in our patterns oftentimes that can get you and make you it can be triggerish now this is not a trigger warning but it can be triggerish and what does that mean it simply means although everybody's going to start to turn over into this fala la 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 christmas season everybody's excited and happy and i actually love christmas christmas is one of my favorite holidays there are still times when it's like the music is playing but i'm just kind of like quiet on the inside because the realness of going through life is that there could possibly be someone listening to this podcast and at this moment are experiencing these 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 moments where everybody else is excited because they're trying to, you know, bring their Christmas tree out and they're decorating and they're getting ready for the holidays. But you could be on the real struggle bus today. If you are feeling like that, let me just tell you, you are not alone. I have been very honest, very, very honest about times when I feel that way because it's real. I go to so many different events per week, but it doesn't mean that as a human being that I'm just jolly go, you know, everything is great. You know, I deal with real life stuff. I have a family. I have my life. I have my own personal mental health that I try to check often. And there are moments when it's just not working. You know, I do all the things to try to take care of myself and discover that, you know, something got away with me. Um, I'm not feeling my best. I'm showing up, but I just feel like I, I'm, I'm feeling blah. I don't know where to put my thoughts. I don't know exactly what it is. Now for me, I do know what it is because I know what I'm dealing with. 
when it comes to my depressive modes or when it comes to anxiety or when it comes to whatever else mental health that I may be dealing with at any given time. But there may be someone who has never went and got diagnosed. So you're sitting there and everybody else around you is literally in a joyful mood, but you are not. Please understand, again, I can't stress enough, not that you're not only alone, but I want you to go and talk to someone. Now I get it. Not everybody is willing to talk to a therapist. But what I am asking for you to do is to have a talk with your doctor. What I am asking for you to do is talk to a friend that you trust that will honor your journey and won't disrespect you by telling everybody your business because you need somebody to support you. I need you to find somebody that you can talk to and just be honest. One of the things that I feel like we don't talk enough about is like sometimes when you like go to your doctors, for instance, the doctor, Jesus, is two people you should be telling your bit like you really should be honest about all things and whoever you serve if, if it ain't Jesus that's all between you but you ought to be honest you've got to like you go and you go to the doctor's office but you don't tell them off everything you only tell them certain parts how can somebody help you without the without the the tools to figure it out like how can they help you without you telling them what's happening you're not telling them any of your symptoms because you're embarrassed I get it the first time I went to see a therapist, actually, I went to go see a psychiatrist first. It was the most embarrassing thing. And I had to ask myself, and I was thinking about this all week as I was preparing for this podcast. And I kept saying, why was I embarrassed? Let me tell you why I was embarrassed. Because it was the yielding up of knowing that I had suspected that something was wrong. And at the moment of sitting in that chair and at the moment of sitting in that office and the moment of going in that I knew for a fact that it was. And I was like, you know, I'm getting the help. I'm here. You know, I don't know what's going to come of this. And you're nervous because you don't know what to expect. And the embarrassment is, is like, you tell yourself, I'm the only one. All of my friends don't have to go to therapy, but I do. Why do I feel like every time I go up, 20 things bring me down? Why do I feel like I have to always be on point for everything? And then when I need somebody, there's nobody there to hold my hand. Nobody there to comfort me. Nobody there to be here for me. And I, I need help. I want to be supported. And I'm embarrassed that I've even done something to be here. But let me just tell you something. Mental health doesn't come when you've done great. Mental health doesn't come when you do bad. Mental health is what it is. It is just like health. It's health. It is the well-being of what your mindset. It's what your mind is having you think. It's the feelings that come along with that, right? And so many times you're embarrassed because you hear the conversations around you and you already know where people stand. You already know where people stand. So that closes the door for you to even feel like you want to reach out. But I, I need you to find one person, just one. You don't need a whole bunch. Listen, I, I used to always think like I needed to have like a gaggle of friends and I do have a lot of good friends, but you just need one. One person in your life will make the difference. Don't let the jolliness of this holiday season make you feel like you have to be performative, make you feel like you have to put on so that you don't have an issue with, so that you don't look different, that you don't look like the oddball out. Don't be performative, be honest, be real. And if you need to withdraw yourself, do it, but have somebody, at least one person that you do have a connection to that you can say, okay, just do a little quick check-in. I'm dealing with some things. I can't really go into it right now, but if you could just check in on me and then be committed that when they check on you to say like, Hey, I'm still struggling in this area. Um, but I'm doing well. I'm, you know, be committed to answering them. This season is going to bring about a lot of emotions and it does every year. This is nothing new. You have the holidays coming up with Thanksgiving, then you go right into Christmas or Hanukkah, whoever you, whatever you uh, do. You got New Year's, you got all this change that's going to take place. Everybody wants to shake up things. Listen, it's okay to feel overwhelmed right now. It's okay to feel stressed because there's parents and not even parents, just people in general that are stressed. They're trying to make their payments for their rent. They're trying to pay their mortgage. They're trying to pay all these bills. Everything keeps going up and they don't even have it in them to even feel like they want to be in a quote unquote Christmas spirit, right? And I feel like we go through this I, again. I love Christmas. Like I look forward to it, not even just for the gifts, but just about 
the music and the candy and the fun and the snacks and the comfort food and just the jolliness of it. But there are times when even in the midst of that, I just feel like I'm in a room full of people, but I feel by myself. As Thanksgiving is coming up, as Christmas is coming up, you got to make some, you got to make some decisions. You got to ask yourself, do you, do you want to be involved with certain people? What I mean by that is you can love people from afar. I stopped going to a lot of people's houses because I just don't have it in me. But sometimes we sit underneath tables of people that we know we don't agree with and we know we have issues with like deep seated, seated issues because a disagreement is nothing. You can disagree with anybody. I can disagree with my mama. I can still show up and have my plate ready for her food. I can disagree with my dad and still show up and have him make his special dessert that he makes for me and put it on my plate, go about my business, right? But when you have deep seated, seated issues with people and y'all continuously put your feet underneath people's table because it's tradition or because you don't want to offend Listen, what you're offending is yourself. So while you're putting on and putting on your your Sunday best to go have dinner at somebody's house who you know for sure is a trigger for your mental health, meaning when you leave their presence, you feel bad about yourself. You feel worse than what you came in. There are some families, I hate to say this, but there are some families that on they make you just want to cleave to your friends. I call my my good friends, like my close friends, family. Family. And what that means is they are friends who became family because they are people that I chose, right? Sometimes you get born into these situations or you get married into these situations and you just be looking like, Lord, why, why, what, what have I done in my past life that I came back and this is what I was given? Like, Lord, please show me the way, <laughs> but you got to stop sitting underneath people's tables. Listen, you can make a turkey leg at home. You can put on, shoot, I'd rather you eat tacos at home on Thanksgiving day than to sit at somebody's house uh, for a turkey dinner and then you are miserable. I would rather for you to just sit at home eating tacos. And let me just say this, for y'all taco eating lovers like myself, because I'm with y'all, don't come for me. What I'm saying is you could have the most non-traditional Thanksgiving than to go and sit with somebody who's going to make you completely miserable because they want to get in there and ask you 2011 questions, but they can't keep their husband together, but they weren't about whether or not when you're going to get married, right? They got kids that they can't even control right now, but they weren't about when you're going to have a baby. Uh, you got the people who, again, they asking you about your business or who you dating and who you seeing. Again, they ain't seen a person in a month of Sundays. Listen, be serious about who you're choosing to spend these holidays with. Cause I'm telling you, life is really short. We know this all the time. We hear this all the time. We say it ourselves, but let me say it again. Life is too short to be sitting in somebody's presence miserable. It is, listen, it's just not. I remember I was with a family member, I won't go into who it was, and they came off the bat. Like I was literally, I had just gotten to where we were at and they literally got came off the bat with just acting crazy, just talking reckless. I packed me and my crew and we rode out. And I kept hearing, everybody kept saying, well, no, why would you know? Don't do that, don't do that. You know how so-and-so is. Listen, I'm not here for the so-and-sos. If your excuse for bad behavior is to tell me that they've always been that way and that's the answer and you expect me to be okay with that, I'm probably not going to be talking to you much longer either. And this is why. Stop making excuses for people. Even some of our older, we, we love some of our older members and you know, some of them have just been this way forever and a day. They've been basically rude. They've been basically ignorant. They've been basically salty all their life. They've been basic, basically bitter their whole life. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't think that I'm supposed to be okay with that. I'm supposed to high five that because I won't. And I didn't, and I haven't <laughs> like I'm the furthest one. I will get in my car and I will leave. And that's exactly what I did. But a lot of people don't have that strength. They still show up. There was a per person on the radio and I forget what radio station that they were, it was on, but they were in an argument with their mom and the mom showed up to their job and like made a scene and carried on. And she wanted to ask the uh, person like, do I go to dinner with my mom for Thanksgiving? And I'm like, well, it's mom. So you need to have a conversation and that conversation will tell you what you need to do, but you can't deny it. You can't act like it doesn't exist and you can't keep giving passes for bad behavior. I personally just, I'm, that's not me. I just don't do it. And I don't want that for you either. Listen, if you are dealing with someone who continuously makes you feel small in the world, that's already trying to make you small. Don't do it. Don't do it. Not for nobody's chicken. I don't care how good somebody's mac and cheese is. And you know, black people love a good mac and cheese, right? I don't care how good the potato salad is. I don't care about how good any of their favorite dishes are. Don't do it. Get around people who love you. 
Get around people who will make you feel amazing, who make you feel like you could do anything. Get around them. And listen, if you can't get around them or you, cause you're like, well, I don't know. My friends are hanging with their family and everybody can't get together. Then you better learn how to eat quietly and eat in your house and have the blast, right? If, and I guess because I have a husband and three kids, cause I, you know, I'd be late. I'd be waiting for my quiet time. I get it. So it's easier for me to be like, I can't wait for me to have some quiet time because I don't have that. I don't have that readily at my disposal. But even when I was single, I used to love sitting in my house, watching the TV and, you know, working out or doing something that was just exclusively just for me because I didn't have to answer to nobody. And when I got sick and tired of hearing people, I could just go in there and shut that door. Shutting that door and creating that peaceful oasis in my own house. It's something about that. It's something about that. I want better for us. I want us to start treating ourselves with the utmost respect because we don't, we can't, we can't, can't complain about other people treating us badly when we treat ourselves badly. We just can't. We, we shouldn't either. I really want all of us to win. I'm, I truly do mean that. But I know there's times when you have to be in your winning season, your losing season and everything in between. But I really want us to win. Um, I am so excited because it's November and that means that this is my ninth year being a blogger. Oh my gosh. I feel like blogger is always my first, my first title because before I became a quote unquote, um, influencer, I was a blogger. I talked about my life. I talked about the good and the bad. I talked about the mistakes that I made. I talked about the things that I've achieved, I talked about everyday life and I'm still talking about it because it's important. So if I have a day and I feel like I want to share that, I'm going to share that. When I first started, people were like, you're sharing too much. Huh? I was talking about mental health before mental health became a big thing as far as talking about it because everybody else was trying to put a cloak over it and trying to act like they were okay. And here I was like this little girl. Well, I wasn't little, but this woman saying, oh my gosh, I am out here struggling. My thought process is this. This is how I am not achieving all the good things on the surface that everybody thinks that I'm surf that I'm doing because down below underneath that surface is the real struggle bus where I am the driver, the captain, all of the things. And knowing that I've been trying to keep this thing going and this is nine years, it's absolutely amazing to me. I have met the most amazing people in this journey who have you trusted me to do content with them and to link up with companies that I truly believe in. Um, I have a policy that I don't serve and share anything. I don't do anything until I have tasted it myself, eaten it myself, tried it myself. Because I think everything that I want to put out that I've ever put out has always been about being genuine. And it's important for me to know that if I say, hey, try this product, it's because I actually tried it, not because somebody's going to give me a check for it. And I have turned down lots of deals because of that. But it's about having some sort of integrity when it comes to what you put out. When you're talking about mental health and wellness, you just can't throw anything out. And so I've been very blessed. And the people that I have met, some of the most beautiful, amazing PR um, agents, some of the most amazing marketing people from from companies, there's some companies that have been my dream companies that I've been able to collaborate with. There's some more that's out there that I'm waiting to collaborate with. I just, listen, I'm growing every single day. I grow every year. If you want to look at my website, the first one, oh my God, this week, uh, I've been doing some revamping of my, of my blog. And basically what that means is that oftentimes when it comes to some of my first blogs, I'm talking about now 2005, I guess so. What it, I had to go back and clean some of those up because they didn't meet the standard. You know, back in the day, 500 word blogs was popping, right? You did that, you were you were good. I didn't even have pictures of some of these blogs because back in the day, you didn't need pictures. So now that you have to have, you know, the 800 to 1,000 word blog blogs, you want to have these quality pictures, you want to have the SEO correctly. I didn't understand what SEO was back then. So I grow every year and I'm in very coachable. I have been very blessed to be under the networks of some amazing people. And when they make sure that I have all my things and my ducks in order, I take heed. I listen. I lean in. I want to know all the answers. I want to know what I need to know. Because when you don't know something, you, you just look crazy because you don't know. Um, nine years 
nine beautiful, magnificent years of saying yes to myself. Now, why do I say that? Although the blog is about blessing other people, and it is, it's still about me saying yes to me. Me saying yes, I'm showing up and being who I am and being okay with people saying the things that they have said about me throughout the years, being okay with the fact that being vulnerable is not always the easiest thing. Saying how you messed up something is not always easy to say because, you know, ego will pay, play such a hard part. But I have been truly blessed beyond measure to honestly do what I do. I love what I do. I love to inspire other people. I love to make sure other people know that, yes, you can win even when you feel like you're losing. And I've had losing years. Like I've had those losing years when it just felt like nothing would stick. But now it's up and it is stuck and I'm so blessed um thank you to every last person who have read my blog who have retweeted it or reshared it on social media and some other platform who when they see me they just you know tell me encourage me to just keep moving on and keep going I have never taken that for granted anybody who knows me very well knows that I am always about that I'm always about making sure that people feel supported and just to have amazing friends who support me I'm not sure if I'm doing any blog events last year I threw a beautiful party I had a great time but I'm not sure if I want to do that I'm thinking about doing something a little bit more low key because I'm ready to celebrate next year for the 10th so we shall see um but what I do know is that everything still needs to be celebrated. If you're a writer and you've been writing for a while, even if it's for six months, celebrate that time. Um, I remember I used to start celebrating like the first year, like six months. Okay, I'm still doing this for the first year. And then when it kept going, I said, oh my gosh, this is really a thing. Like I really am about this life. Um, I had to improve the writing. I mean, everything improves everything improves thank god i didn't listen to the one woman that told me that nobody would listen and read my blogs thank you lord that i did not listen to her because i have over a million or so readers every year i was only getting seven readers in the beginning i was only having four seven people that was tuning in faithfully probably my same seven friends or possibly a family member in there here and there but honestly honestly this has been a road this has been a beautiful road so I just want to say to anybody, if you may not be a blogger, you may not be a content creator, you just want to do whatever it is that you have on your heart to do, don't give up. Just go ahead and do it. The worst thing that I say is that, um, you know, telling yourself that you can't do something is like the worst to do. You just hurt yourself. Like you putting down yourself will never get you any higher. But stepping out on this faith to really do this journey has been very enriching for me. It's been helping me. And I hope that it's been helping you because I love it and I'm going to keep on going to, to I'm not here. I'm trying to continue going on. And to wrap up this episode, I want to make sure I remind you that you are going to be surrounded by some negative people, either by your choice because you won't cut them out of your world or because people keep sneaking in their negativity. There's a difference between not liking the same things that you like with other people. That's fine. You don't have to like the same things that I like. And there's a difference between agreeing with somebody be over every little thing because I don't agree with that either. What I'm talking about is make sure when you are surrounding yourself with the right people, make sure they are the right people. I have been drained of the negative energy and so I don't really allow that negativity to stay around me. And it's not because I'm better than anybody else. It's just that I don't have the tolerance for it and I don't have to be around it. I choose to make a different choice, make a different choice this holiday season Make sure that you also don't go into debt trying to be putting on for somebody because these folks are not going to come pay your bills on January 1st or 2nd. I want you to make sure you have a budget. I want you to make sure you enjoy all the things. I want you to make sure that you just have everything set up the way that you want it to because I want you to be successful and I really want you to win. Thank you for listening to this episode of Conversations with Toy. We do have guests. It's just that we're recording a little bit further behind and it's all good. I've been enjoying being on this podcast and being the only one talking with you because I've kind of missed those moments. And so I'm grateful for it. Thank you for listening to the podcast. You guys have been showing up and showing out on the numbers. Uh, thank you for following me on all the social medias, YouTube, Instagram, all the things. Just follow me, Toy Time Blog. You will find me. Have the most amazing weekend. Remember, we are turning them clocks back so you technically gain an hour unless you're a parent. Then it's trash because your kid's going to still get up whenever they get up. Make sure that you continue to eat your food and get work out and do all those things and don't change your sleeping habits to accommodate this new um, extra hour. 
the only thing I will say is that there is the uh, issue of going home and it's now super dark. Um, I took my daughter, I take my daughter to school with the crack of, of Jesus. And I'll tell you every time I do, it gets darker and darker every day. So I'm not even a fan of that, but we shall see how this all goes. I want you to have a great day. I want you to just continue to love on yourself, continue to pour back into your cup. And please, please, please find one activity that you love that's about you. I know you're uber parents like I am, or maybe you're just running around hanging out with the girls or you're hanging out with your boys and you're doing all these different things. But go ahead and take an activity and do it for yourself. You are worthy of that. Have a great weekend. Be back with you next week. And thank you for listening to Conversations with Toy. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.